This is Susan Wheelbanks with BlendedInsight.com. I am a holistic and integrative healing arts practitioner, an intuitive, and an energy healer. In this podcast, I share tips, tools, and suggestions that have helped me along my path in hopes of inspiring and helping you along yours. Let's get started with today's podcast topic. Hello, Bright Soul. Thank you so much for joining me on another podcast. And thank you for all of your sweetness and your kindness. I really appreciate it. This eclipse energy has made people very sensitive. So I've noticed a lot of people looking for occasions to be offended and getting offended over things that they're just completely having inaccurate perception over. So it's so nice to just be with people who are aware of what's going on, who are conscious and who are just kind and loving. So I really appreciate you being here. So I'm just going to go into the topic for today because I'm getting this question so much, and that is people wanting to get started with a private practice of energy healing. It's usually Reiki, and they're asking me for tips of how I got started. So I wanted to just share a little bit about my journey. A lot of it is on my website in the about section, so I'm not going to go over that in depth. But the way that I got started with this is, first, I've always been intuitive, So I've always had clairvoyance, clairsentience, claircognance. I've always had that. So I was doing readings for people. And I don't need cards to do readings because it comes in clairvoyantly, intuitively. I just have that gift. It comes from other lifetimes. I was born to do this. This is part of my dharma. So I would do readings for people and I could see areas that they were blocked, but I didn't know how to heal those blocks. So it was kind of in the back of my mind, like, hmm, I wish I could help people move through it. Because one of the things with readings is if you go to someone who, first of all, is not clear, they don't have a clearing practice and energy healing practice where they're keeping their channels clear, you can get muddy information. The secondary piece of that is if you are blocked and cleared, like you're, you're all um, dirty, your aura is dirty. When I give you information, it has to go through all of those filters and those clouds and it doesn't come out clear. That's why I tell everyone you need a healing more than you need a reading. Reading can have its place, but if someone is all anxious and they're out of balance and then I give them more information, oftentimes it's not helpful. That's why I changed my format to only be a combination session. You cannot only get a reading from me because it just isn't helpful. But when I was just doing the readings, I could see those things. So I, I, I just silently was thinking, I wish I could help people clear those blocks because I can see where this is just more information and I'm not, sure. I thought that didn't do anything with it. Life goes on. My daughter at the time was having restless leg syndrome. She had some things going on in her body and I was working for the medical center just like I am now. And I had a colleague of mine mention Reiki to me as a way to help her. So at the time I was doing this AIM program. I've talked about it before in this podcast. It's called AIM, A-I-M. It's an energetic tray program. It's kind of strange. I can't say that it helped me. I really have no opinion on it. I'm very neutral. I had heard about it from Dr. Wayne Dyer years, years ago, like 15 years ago. And I tried it for, you're supposed to do the program for like a year or something. Anyway, I didn't really notice anything. But the person that that was the representative for the AIM program knew someone that did Reiki. So I just mentioned it to her. She gave me the name of someone. So I set up a private session with this person and I started investing in private sessions. So I would take my daughter to her and I would be in the room with her and I would just sit and observe and let my daughter get the treatments. And then I was just curious about it. Before I let my daughter get a treatment, I got a treatment because I need to test it for myself first. So I went and did the Reiki session and I was like, that's kind of cool. It wasn't like anything wow or mind blowing. I'm just like, yeah, it's relaxing. It's kind of cool. I can feel the energy moving. And then the practitioner had mentioned to me that she thought I should learn it. And I'm like, hmm, I mean, I never thought about learning it. I was never drawn to it, you know, and she was sharing with me, you could learn it and then do it on your daughter. I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Let me learn it. So that's how I started learning it. Well, through learning it, 
I went all the way to the master level and I went to the teacher level. So I am able to teach it, but I choose not to, uh, mainly because I moved on to other practices that I use primarily. I don't have the desire to teach it. In any case, I started looking for people to practice on as I was learning it. So the way that I did that was I just told people, friends and family, hey, I'm learning this healing modality. If you're open, if you're willing, would you mind if I practice on you? What happened was is there was a resonance with the healing modality that wasn't taught to me. So I've shared this before because I have done healing work in multiple lifetimes. And I just say that because I have a natural gift and a lot of the information that was coming in, even when I was being taught, didn't come from the training. So the instructor would say, how did you know that? And my answer would be like, I don't know. It's just very innate to me and it feels very familiar. It's very easy. It comes through quickly because this is something I was born to do. My practice clientele began to grow bigger than I had the time for. And at that point, I just said, okay, so this will be donation-based or what would you charge for it? So I used it as an opportunity to build my practice in accordance with the value that people were receiving at that time. So that is always my suggestion to people. First, if you're drawn to a healing modality, go get a couple of sessions, see how the energy feels, find a private practitioner, and then learn locally. I don't believe you can learn Reiki online. I know that angers people because they want to do everything online. But the way that I learned Reiki was you have to get the attunements blown into your crown. Now, I'm the Asui Reiki lineage. Now, I know that some people do holy fire and angelic. I mean, there's there is so many modalities or variations of Reiki now. It is a saturated market, and it's a lot to keep up with. And a lot of the stuff people I see people doing, they say they're doing Reiki. I don't resonate with it, and it doesn't. It's just it isn't for me. So I don't know what they're doing. I'm very clairvoyant. I see stuff and I'm like, I don't think that you're doing it, but you can do whatever you want because we all have free will choice and some people will be, you know, drawn to that. And all of the work that we do spiritually and, you know, practically too is there's a karmic effect to it. So for me, I take it very seriously. And when I'm sitting down with someone and they're trusting me and they're vulnerable and they're needing healing, That's incredibly serious to me. I take it very, very seriously. So for me, you need to learn in person. There's an initiation that happens. The way that I learned Reiki was I sat down with a teacher. I learned the lessons, you know, went through the material. And then there was a whole ritual and a ceremony to initiate me with these symbols. And it had to be stepped in. And I've shared that before. You can't go too fast because your body has to integrate it. So as I was climbing up the levels, I was just practicing on people and then asking them, what would you pay for this? And then that's how I established my baseline. But at first it was just, let me do this and let me practice on you until I built a really good, strong, powerful practice. And then I would start charging people for it. So that is always my recommendation for people. Find someone locally, go get the treatments, you know, the sessions, and then If you're drawn, find a local person to learn in person and then start to practice, build your practice. And then this is an intuitive work. So when it's time to start charging, that information will come in pretty strong for you. I mean, the same thing happens for me when it's time to raise my rates, because for me, my practice has expanded so much. I'm always learning, taking new classes. My value of what I offer in the time always is increasing because I'm constantly bringing in new skills. And I'm sharpening my skills. You know, I've been doing this for 13 years now, but it's consistent. It's not like, oh, I learned it 13 years ago and I do it here and there. No, I do it consistently. So there is a difference in how much you're practicing and how you're developing your skills. Are you continuing to learn and evolve? So that is always my suggestion to people. Now, with my YouTube channel, I was guided and directed to do my YouTube channel and I set it up the same way that I set up my private sessions. Sometimes people will say, I can't see your hands. What are you doing? I don't do my private sessions that way. It's better if you sit back and receive. There's no sense in you watching me. If you're watching me, then you're thinking about it. This is a feeling type of modality. It's not a thinking modality. So I ask people to just relax, close your eyes, uncross your arms and legs. Because when you cross your arms and legs, I can feel it because the energy crosses right there. So it's just a lot easier if you have your arms uncrossed and you're just relaxing and you're receiving it. It just goes quicker. 
I tend to do things a little bit differently. You know, everyone in this modality, in any modality, has their own imprint, their own way of doing it. I am clairvoyant and clairsentient and claircognate, and I have all of those intuitive skills. I will share when I'm in private session with people, when I'm doing healings, if I have something that I am being guided to share. I've had people who have received healings from me and then they go to someone else and they're disappointed because it's not the same. Well, no two people are exactly the same. And so you're going to pull it in and it's going to assimilate how you're supposed to assimilate it and how you're supposed to integrate it. That's why my business is called Blended Insight because I don't just do Reiki and I'm not going to do it exactly like someone else. I'm pulling all of these skills and gifts and knowledge and information from lifetimes, not just this one. And after Reiki, I was still learning different energy healing modalities. And that's why I started shifting my titles to energy healing because even in my Reiki videos on YouTube, it's not just Reiki. Because even when I was learning Reiki, I was pulling in stuff that I hadn't been taught. But it was effective. And I'm just doing it intuitively because that's what I'm guided to do. So I was told intuitively to do my YouTube channel. I set it up that way. My early videos, they're, they're terrible. I was told to leave it up. I'm going to. So it's an intuitive practice. And I don't have a huge production. I don't do this full time. It's time consuming to create content, but I do it because I'm guided to do it. So a lot of times people will say, why don't you do it live? Or why don't you do this platform? Because I don't have the time. That's why. <laughs> it's not that I don't want to. And maybe in the future, I will have the time. So I actually appreciate that people want to consume content or spend time with me. I, I honestly really, really appreciate that. But for now, at this stage, I'm doing what I'm guided to do and staying balanced as much as possible. So this is how I just started developing. It was intuitive. There is a divine plan that I'm following. And I don't always know what the future holds or how it's going to unfold. I just follow it because I'm in the flow. This is a intuitive practice. So for me personally, I moved away from Reiki in my private practice because I started learning other modalities that seemed to be a little bit more powerful. And with each modality, it's familiar to me. Even when I learned pranic healing, the crystal healing training, some people were stumbling with how to hold the crystal. They felt uneasy with the crystal. I'm like picked it up and I was whipping it around. It felt like second nature to me. And that has been my experience with the energy healing modalities. It's also been my experience doing readings because I don't need the cards. I use the cards as a placeholder or like a guide point. But if any of my private clients are listening, they'll tell you most of that information already comes up when I'm just tuning into their energy and doing a healing. And then the reading is just a repeat. So a lot of energy healing practitioners don't do readings. In fact, I'm the only one that I know that does both, which is one of the unique ways that my gifts are expressed. And it's what I'm supposed to be offering. And you'll have to find your own unique gift and your own unique expression. If you try to duplicate or copy someone, it will come across as inauthentic because it is. So I always encourage people to just relax, tune in, do your work, and let those gifts unfold for you. Let your own imprint come into existence. And the people that are drawn to you that you're meant to serve will be, they'll just naturally come in. And I don't advertise. I've never advertised. I don't do marketing plans. I don't do any of that. My business has organically grown through word of mouth. It's been referral based. And I like it like that because I don't have the time to do all of that stuff, creating huge productions and you know, getting live, going live a bunch of times a week. I work full time. I'm a mom and this is a part time thing. I'm a content creator. I do the best I can. But here's the thing. When I do show up, I am showing up in a clear and clean space. And I'm all about quality over quantity. That is my thing. I want to give quality content in a short amount of time. You know, length and content and the, it, it really isn't all that powerful if there's no meat to it. And I'm not saying that it's always impactful for you personally. I really don't know. I just know that each time it's different and it's intuitively guided and I show up and I do my best and then I just disconnect from it and I put it out in the world. And that's how I run it. The other thing I wanted to mention, I get asked about Reiki instructors all the time. I don't know any Reiki instructors. The person that taught me isn't teaching anymore. And that was so long ago. 
And honestly, all the people that I work with now, like that I do healing exchanges with, it's not Reiki that we use, it's something else. So I evolved past Reiki. There, Reiki is a beautiful modality. It really is. Reiki sends universal life energy. That's what it does through the hands. You pull it down and you channel it through your hands. And it's a beautiful modality. I was called to do something different. There was more um, expansion that needed to happen. So I didn't just stop there. But you know what? I've met so many people that they've just been doing Reiki for, you know, I don't know, decades, 40 years, just Reiki. And they're happy and they're, they're on their path. It wasn't my path. My path was to expand to something more. And so that's what I've been doing. And so please don't send me emails asking me. I don't know any Reiki practitioners. I know pranic healing practitioners because that's primarily who I work with. And, you know, I work with a couple of other practitioners that do a little bit of pranic healing and some other things. But if you're looking for Reiki, my suggestion is find someone local, get on the internet. And that's what I did uh, here recently. Someone was like, well, I don't know anyone that does this work. And I thought, neither did, I didn't know anyone. Like I said, I'm usually the one out front. So I come from a military background working in a standard medical business. <laughs> and I was drawn to this and it's going to require a little bit of work. Sometimes you have to actually do the work yourself. Can you believe it? <laughs> I mean, that's what I did. I actually put the intention out there. I started letting people know what I was looking for, and I started doing the work. And then it showed up. So that's kind of the thing, how this thing works. And then also, I wanted to just mention, if you are trying to learn an energy healing modality as an escape from a regular job, I don't think that's going to work, brother or sister. <laughs> Because this work is a higher calling. And so when you start doing spiritual work like this, where you are getting your aura expanded, anything that's in your aura is going to come up to be cleared. So it's not a shortcut. Let me just mention that. It's not a shortcut. It's not easy work. You are holding space for someone. And you have to have yourself in a very clean space. I know all the practitioners don't do this. I'm all about quality and integrity. I take this work extremely seriously because I know that there's a karmic effect. If I showed up in an ugly state and I transferred ugly or impure energy to someone, that's coming back on me. And I would never do that to someone. I do not want to do that. This, I take this really, really serious because it's vulnerable. This is a vulnerable one-on-one -on -one type of work to be doing. So... It's going to require you to up your game, your spiritual game. You're not going to be able to do the other shenanigans that you possibly used to do. Your your vibe is going to change. Who you hang around with is going to change. Your whole life is going to change. But it's going to get slimmer because not everyone is on this path. And so you won't be part of the collective as you were before. So you have to be prepared to go into that dark night of the soul because oftentimes that's what happens. Even when people start getting energy healing, when we work together privately, they'll get a healing and then sometimes they'll come back and say, oh my gosh, like my life just blew up. Well, what happened was, is when you get on this path, you accelerate your path. So let's just say you were on the easy path and you weren't really doing the spiritual work. So you didn't have a lot of awareness and you weren't trying to serve in the capacity that you're trying to serve now. Once you get on this path, let's just say something was going to take 10 years to happen. It condenses to maybe five. So now instead of all of this coming up, you know, in a 10 year span, it comes in a five year span and it feels like, holy smokes, everything is just happening at once. It's because you are cleaning yourself. There is a purification process happening. And when you start learning a spiritual art, like energy healing or modality, the speeding up happens. So I also wanted to caution you there because it isn't like it's just this, you know, it, I mean, it's beautiful. I'm not saying it's not beautiful, but it is not a way out because I do get sometimes people just saying, you know, I hate my job. I think I'll just do what you do. That looks easy. Why don't I just learn an energy healing thing? And then I can just sit there and meditate and send energy. Oh, it's not like that at all. <laughs> it's not an easy energy to work in. And a lot of healers during this pandemic, they quit doing it. They got burned out, uh, especially because if you're aligned or you're around people that don't want to do their own work and they look at you as a urgent care, so to speak, 
you know, I'll just treat myself like crap. And then I'll go to you, the doc in a box, the urgent care, and you can fix me up. And then when I get tired, I'll just drain you. And I mean, this happens. And so this is why I always share and talk about boundaries, because this is something I had to get really good at. And then just identifying who really wants to do the work and who just wants you to do the work for them. Because let's be honest, we can't do the work for other people. So it's not for the faint heart, but it is for those who are deeply inclined and called to do it. And it's not for everyone, but it is for some of us because we're drawn to do it and we're naturally gifted at it. And it's something we're being called to. So I just wanted to offer that too, because I do see those every once in a while, like, oh, that seems easy. It's not easy, but it's worth it. And honestly, I just appreciate serving people in this capacity because it's helped me. And that's the reason why I do the podcast, because other people doing podcasts, it's helped me over the years. And so I'm just paying it forward and trying to serve in the way that I'm called to serve and just trying to be the very best beneficial presence on the planet I can be. And so if you have any other questions about how I got started or my suggestions about starting a practice, I mean, honestly, I don't have anything more to share on that unless I skipped over something, missed something, please, you can feel free to ask that question or drop me a line. I'll be happy to address it in another podcast. But I really appreciate you being here and let's go into a healing. So you can uncross your arms and legs, focus on your breathing and I will turn the energy healing on. Okay, and so it is. You can start coming back into your body. If you aren't on my mailing list, you can do so over at blendedinsight.com right on the front page. And if you haven't left me a review on iTunes, I would so appreciate it. And I just wish you a beautiful week. Take care. Bye-bye.